Good morning, everyone. It's Friday, August 28th. Gosh, remember when you were a little kid in school? I think we got out at three o'clock and the clock would get stuck at quarter to three and be like tick, 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 tick. And now that I'm an adult, it's like, here we are, the end of August. I, I, I can't believe it. So as far as what's going on in California, I realize I'm beating my pen here. I don't want to do that too noisy. Sorry, guys. Um, <clears throat> as far as California and the fires go, it, it's still a mad mess. I believe our our fire is about, I think, 30% contained. And But the good news is, is that the smoke has way calmed down. I mean, I could go out and take a walk and I don't have to worry about it at all, of which I need to do that today. And then Justin, you know, went to Austin with his mom to escape Houston and they gratefully escaped any sort of damage. He said barely a, a leaf fell down, but that doesn't uh, take away the underscore of the people that have been damaged so greatly with this hurricane. And both the fire people and the hurricane people, our thoughts and prayers are with you. This is crazy times. So I got some questions and we're gonna look at some more quilts and then I'm gonna talk about uh, machine quilting, okay? Specifically straight line and how I do it on my Q20 and then how I do it on my domestic. And so you don't have to have a fancy machine to do this at all, but I got a couple tricks for you, okay? Okay, so first of all, Rita wants to know about binding. It's going to be a long time before I bind this thing. Because I'm straight line quilting and they're only this far apart, it's going to take forever. But I'll tell you what my two cons my consideration is going to be. I mean, I, can we see? Yeah, I love the color transition, all right? So I either have a choice to go with the blues and purples up here or the pinks and pinks and yellows up here but I want to keep it consistent with this color change that I've done. And so what will happen is even, what is that? Um, even your binding, you need to consider as a design option. Um, I think in this case, I would not do white, but I'm not against white as a binding. So I just cut it out and then I press it. So I, I like my bindings at about two and an eighth. And then I, of course, then press it right and um then i will literally hang it up there on the wall and decide what i like best so it's still a mystery all right then debbie asked about sashing on a diagonal um debbie i'm going to try and explain this but don't but it's just like if you were doing it across okay so what i would do if i wanted sashing in all of these i would let's take this row right here you would first just sew a sashing there, 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 there. And then when you put, and then the same with this row, and then when you put these two rows together, of course, a sashing goes right in there. So uh, don't get all tumbled up on the fact that it's on the diagonal because basically the principles are exactly the same. Um, oh, Margie. Margie sent me a very nice letter, but she brought up the jigsaw puzzles. Uh, those jigsaw puzzles, I want you to know, was were or John's ideas, idea. And when he first came on board, and we were just not even, we were sinking, we were weren't swimming fast enough. He's in this in the office working on these jigsaw puzzles, and I got so mad at him. I'm like, this has nothing to do with the quilt show, nothing. And for those of you that don't know, we have um, quilt jigsaw puzzles online here. You can do it on your computer. And don't you know, it's probably the most popular feature. <laughs> Completely antique you as I'm sorry, John. So, okay, pin snob. I am a pin snob, and you can bet the quilter select will have some soon. And I always say it's the one that just make you catch your breath. And there's a lot out there that are lovely. Um, Bowens actually are very interesting. Um, they're really, I think, the top crust, um, only because the little heads on them are hand-blown glass. And then it's my understanding, I could be wrong, but the shaft of the pin itself is something like a piano wire, so it can like self-correct. Um, but probably if I had to grab something off the shelf, it might be the clover. 
Do you just want a glass head pin? You don't want it extra long. No, I'll say I. I don't want it extra long. And I want it to be a, it'll say like super fine or whatever. I just go for the skinniest ones you can get. And yeah, they're going to bend and break. And that's just like your sewing machine needle is going to bend and break. Just like your iron is going to break. I mean, you're going to, I know, doesn't that just kill you? My irons usually last about two years. Um, and then I do them in. And I like expensive irons. So, hmm. Um, oh, the other thing was uh, yesterday I took uh, Rosalie Dace's class uh, lecture. Uh, it was offered through the Stitch and Post in Sisters, Oregon. And she's so good, you guys. She's such a good teacher. And she's going to be doing, I believe, monthly classes. It's 30 bucks. And uh, I never tire of her. Every time I listen to her, I take something away, okay? And yesterday's, I was not how to. I think next time she said she is going to tell how she approaches making some quilts and stuff, but that's not her gift. Her gift is bringing out the artistry in you. Her gift is having you see the world in a way that perhaps you would not have normally seen it and then and then she inspires you to go forth. So I do believe that they are uh, posting this. I asked on it, we were typing in, uh, I asked, is, are, is this gonna be available for purchase after the fact? And the answer was, I don't know. And then I got a, a note from Jean and the gal that runs the show and she just said, I didn't wanna promise it without you know Val saying okay or whatever, but uh, she, I, I believe it will be there. And it's just give yourself that gift. I just, this woman is amazing. All the way from South Africa. Oh, somebody bought a Liberty puzzle because I mentioned them. Yep. <laughs> yep. You guys check out these puzzles. They're not cheap, but we, we quilters know how to spend money. I know that to be sure. Look at this fabric. Oh, they're so good. They're so hard. Um, what about pins with the handle heads? Okay. I have not played with those yet, but I think if somebody, I think the argument for them is if you have, um, arthritic hands or something like that, but, uh, sorry that I didn't turn off my my a my inbox you can enjoy that um i i would prefer not to use them but i think only because i really when i'm doing three pins i like to really push that center one down um i don't know how sharp they are or whatever but as we mature yes as we mature we'll be seeing more and more products that speak to our specific issues and that's one thing we're doing on quilter select too can I show the backing? Sure, I can show the backing. It's nothing exciting, but I am gonna get to backing in a minute. I just went really, this is actually leftover fabric line of mine, and I usually keep a yard of each piece, and then I just piece it together. What I mentioned was that if you have a lot of white in the quilt, and a lot of you don't, um, but if you have a lot of white, you're gonna to wanna to keep the top, the back light, because I have had it show through, all right? Okay, so let's look at, <laughs> Sandy, you're definitely mature. <laughs> so I'm, I'm immature. Oh, speaking of that, <laughs> when this is over, go to uh, my Facebook page, my professional Facebook page. Um, Robin called me this morning and couldn't stop laughing, and so she sent me the link, and it's pretty funny. Now, there are cuss words in it. Okay, I never say bad words. In fact, It's a miracle I haven't said something yet in one of these uh, vidcasts. Let me just say, okay, sometimes I can get rather colorful in my language. And uh, there's some of that in it, but oh my gosh, it is. Anyways, anyways, anyways. Okay, so uh, I got a, a letter back from Paola. And <laughs> when I got done, I went, oh my gosh, I hope I didn't hurt her feelings. But uh, remember on Wednesday, I looked at this and I thought, oh gosh, this is the front of her quilt. I don't know what to say to her. I don't know. <laughs> then I realized it was her backing. Okay, so she sent me a picture of the top of the quilt. So we can see that she hadn't lost her marbles completely. <laughs> 
I think we've all lost our marbles some with all this COVID lockdown stuff. But take a little look at her border there. I think that's pretty awesome. Okay. So thanks for the laugh this morning. Okay. Pines. I see the fish now. All I saw before was the white space. I see the fish. You guys, they're swimming to the left-hand side. Oh, you know, I, I can't... I saw it. It's so cute. Before, I just saw the white. So this is a quilt. This is a quilt that you have to look at, that when you walk up to it, it does not tell you the complete story in the first five seconds. So good job on that one. Okay, here's Karen's. Oh, Karen. <laughs> this is incredible. Uh, Karen told me that she was a little concerned about the baskets. Uh, uh, when we're entering into, don't, don't, if you don't be concerned about the baskets. I mean, this is absolutely monumental. And my guess is it's fairly large too. If you can handle this, you can handle the baskets. The thing with baskets is that, is that, um, they're all pretty much constructed the same way. And so, We've gone over how to get your triangles right. We've done all that. And we will continue to do it in the baskets class. But to me, this was a more challenging quilt. And it's more because working with fabric and color. Okay? So don't you guys be put off about the baskets at all. Okay, so Ms. Ray, um, this is beautiful. And her question was... Does she do black around the outside edge? And um, I would, and what I would do is I would, and you asked, like three quarters, just like I believe what we're looking at is three quarters for your sashing. Keep it the same. This is what I would do, in my humble opinion. Keep it the same size as that inner sashing. You don't want a big black border on it. I think that'd be very, it would not help, it would not, add anything, okay? But if you did the uh, border the same size as that sashing, and then also within that border incorporate your binding, which I would do black, so that on the outside edge, it's still gonna be three quarters, but it's also gonna be bound. Does that make sense? And I think you have to add the uh, black around the edge before you do the binding, or else it's gonna screw up how beautifully centered those blocks are on point. So I think I think that's how I would do it. In fact, I'm confident that's how I would do it. So this is um, Red Work Renee's, and Re I cannot wait to see what you're going to do on the edge. Um, again, I'm not one for throwing a solid border on unless unless the quilt says, do that for me. And when solid, I mean even the print, although we have seen some come through that are absolutely beautiful. And I do see your stars. I know you were working on those. Brenda, I miss you so much. I just miss you so much. Brenda and Jeannie, they come to my retreat and I just, I love those ladies. Okay. So Brenda, I got, I, I don't even know how I stumbled on this one, but I did. Uh, the cave wasn't working for her. And so that's fine. That's fine. I think the solution that you did here was fabulous. Here's the case of an, an inner border or a spacer or whatever you want to call it. It's adding something and it's interesting. It's not, if she had, like, I like how vertically there's the colors and how they've changed. Okay. And then horizontally, there's the white. If you had done the solid colors horizontally also, it would not have been wonderful in my book. This to me looks like I'm looking through um, a window or something like that. So yay, good for you. Okay, so what we're going to do now, and I've got to get to the top of the screen, is I we're going to start with the Q20. What I show you on the Q20 with my straight line quilting is exactly what you will do on your domestic machine, whether it's a big one, whether it's a standard, it's the exact same thing. The beauty of being on the Q20 was that I could really show you marking and all that. And also I figured out that I can straight line quilt on that and not get myself in trouble. So grab a bag of popcorn and let's take a look, okay? So here we are, I'm at my new machine. I know a lot of you have, um, 
big armed machines to work on and it's not hard to do straight line quilting on this at all okay uh, of course on my domestic i use my walking foot but it's just fine here all right now this is my new vernina q20 and i wanted to share a couple things with you on the screen that uh, actually, Amanda Murphy explained to me over the phone, and it has changed my life when it comes to this machine because it is very different. Okay? So when you turn it on, this is what comes up. This is like the default screen, all right? The only thing that might be different on mine than yours is that I put a laser light on mine, and I'll show you how that works in a moment. So when I turn it on, I want to make my... A uh, stitch per inch, I like it a little bit lower at eight, okay? But probably the most important thing you need to know because this is so different than your domestic is that your foot pedal right here is gonna become an extremely important tool, all right? You can set your foot pedal so that when you hit down here, your needle up, needle down, or you can do it so that the uh, presser foot comes up, but I chose the knot feature. And the knot feature does two things. If I tap the foot, just tap, it uh, just goes, the needle goes down, comes up, as well as the presser foot. If I hold it, it takes about five stitches. Now, the other thing that's gonna seem crazy, I'm gonna get out of here, is that, um, is that I do like to do this barefooted, okay? Because I have a better feel for the whole thing. So I'm gonna put that down there. The other thing you're gonna have to play with if you're on this machine, the Q20, is that do you want BSR1 or BSR2? For myself, I started at one and now I've graduated to two, okay? And then just like on your domestic machine, I really like these slidey mats, all right? I have actually cut a bigger hole in it so that you can see the two stitch regulators, all right? So I, I was kind of afraid to do that at first, but mm -mm, it's fine to do. And I do believe we have these in the store. So you've got BS, BSR1, BSR2, play with play with them both. BSR3 is a basting stitch. Well, forget that because I'm going to do it with my powder. And then they have manual. Forget that because I love this BSR so much. It's a double BSR. I mean, you really get good results right off the bat. So what I've done, and I showed this on Wednesday, is I've stitched in the ditch in the directions I want it to go. And as Jackie Gearing taught me, you want to divide and conquer. So I have just marked this. Well, that's kind of a funky mark. I have just taken this six inch block, half of six is three, and I then mark it, all right? I can also use points that have been pieced. And again, this is true on domestic. I mean, all of this that I'm showing is true. Again, I love, love, love this pen because it will go away in about, I don't know, a couple days. And um, I can also go and iron this quilt, all right, while it's marked and it's not gonna permanently set it. And that's huge. And then look at this. I just stick it right up there. <laughs> it's perfect. It hasn't fallen off yet. So let's go down here to this end. I am, and, I, and I'll tell you, doing this um, <laughs> on camera is kind of freaking me out. So, oh, I'm gonna go to BSR2, all right. Get my foot pedal where it feels good to me. I'm going to go down on the heel. See how it's just one little thing. I'm gonna pull up the bobbin thread. I'm hoping John is getting in here really, really close. Are you, John? Yes. Then, then I'm going to press down on the heel again and let take, take some stitches. So you can see I've gone down into the mark there, and now I've got to butt my ruler up. And it's about a quarter inch from this edge of this to the uh, needle. Oh, I'm going to turn my laser light on too. Mary Kay talked me into getting that, and I'm so glad I did. So the other thing is, okay, so now I can see the ruler is parallel to this line, but also... I can see here that it's right on the piecing line. So I'm keeping two things straight. I love the laser light. Now on BSR2, I step on the gas. 
My presser foot's hung up on something. There we go. I press on the gas and I move it. In a perfect world, if I want to reposition the ruler, I do it where I'm not in dark cloth. I do it in the light cloth. I don't want to do it in the dark cloth if possible because sometimes it'll do a herky-jerky on me. Oh shoot, see I shouldn't have stopped there. I also have it set as needle down. Okay, stop right here. You can see I'm getting off of this right here. That's not good. So it's equally as important as I pay attention to what's going down with the lines of the ruler. Now you might be wondering about these gloves. See, I'm gonna stop in the light. These are actually prototypes that we're working on right now. Um, let's see, where are we? Oh, my piecing wasn't perfect here, but there we go. We're working on, and I really like them because my fingers are free. And it's got like a little pad thing on the underneath side. Be a great Christmas gift. Hopefully we'll have them before Christmas. That's the problem, we develop these products and then we have to wait. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm at, at the end, quote unquote. I'm going to stop here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a bunch of those little stitches by clicking the heel. Okay, and then I'm going to click it fast. Needle comes up, presser foot comes up. I'm going to pull away. And then I'm going to come back down. And I think I'm going to loosen my tension up on top. Somebody asked the other day, see how that pulled the bobbin up? I'm going to make sure my hand's out of the way and John's getting that. And then I'm just going to clip it, okay? And then I'm ready to go to the next place. Um, to me, I'm having a little hard time pulling this out, so I'm going to go up to my uh, tension, and I'm just going to take it down a little bit. If the number changes color, you know you're no longer in default. So... So now what I would do is I would go back and I would divide and conquer and I would go down this, you've got here and here, all right? Divide and conquer and then I would divide and conquer there. So here I've kind of been doing that. You can see here's what I just did. This is the, the length I did, the three inches. And then this is one and a half. And then I did it again. Now when I get to where it's this small, I don't feel inclined to have to draw the whole line, okay? And again, this is on my domestic, this is on um, this machine. What I'll do, I love that this table has side wings on both sides. And this also, this is flat enough for me to be able to put my tools on top. So what I do now is I can use my ruler and go to the halfway mark or I can tell you right now, I know the halfway mark. And in some of these blocks, it's gonna get weird. It's not gonna hit on the line. Don't freak out about that. And I'm also feeling like maybe I should go press this. I mean, I won't for this demo, but this is getting a little bunchy for my taste. And I don't have to worry about it because it will not permanently set this in. Oh, somebody's calling me or something. I'll call you back, Robin. And so then I do the same thing, only I don't have to use so much ink. So I would, again, put the ruler down here. Um, oh, you know what? I probably would want to do it up here, okay? Once you've done, once you're in the quilt making mode for a while, some of these things you can just do yourself. And look at the little laser light. I just love that. I think it's an extra couple hundred bucks, but if I had this machine, I would seriously consider getting it. And I think I will use it even for not quilt, straight line quilting. Pull up, got that bobbin under there. Take those little stitches. Put the ruler up. And I can see now the ruler is actually with this other stitch line coming in one eighth of an inch. So let's let it rip. Okay. Okay. So where's... There we go. I don't know. Uh-oh, this is all jerky.
There we go. We went back. So here we go. Um, I think that is worthy of an Oscar or an Emmy. Do you not? <laughs> so let's talk about now domestic. Okay. And I should, I, I'm going to, wait, I want to say a couple other things. Um, shame on me for not pressing more in between. I was able to get it flat, but I'll tell you, I got a little worried there for a little bit. So always press. Also, I misquoted, um, divide and conquer is Cindy Needham's thing that she uses when designing quilt designs. Uh, what I'm using is I'm using as far as thread goes, I'm using the 80 on top as well as you guys know, I always use 80 in the bobbin. I'm not sure what I think about the 80 on top on the Q20 for quilting. Um, on my domestic, no big deal. And so I also don't quilt real fast because it is a very fragile thread. So why am I using the 80 weight on top? I'm using it because, okay, I'm opposite of Ricky on this. Many times, okay, many times when Ricky machine quilts a quilt, he wants all of his stitches to show because he's really good, okay? I would prefer for my stitches to the actual uh, fiber go back, okay? So we're not really looking at the stitches because I'm not a super trained professional yet. I'm keeping that optimism, okay? So I am doing 80-80. Um, I probably would, I don't want to, I mean, I'm not going to pick out thread on that on the um, Q20, but probably I would use the 60 on top next time. So how do you maintain the weight on the ruler as you maneuver the fa fabric under the needle? Samantha asked. What is so cool about that ruler is that it's got um, it's got the same stuff that these rulers have underneath, and so it doesn't slide. So actually, I don't even hardly need a glove on my ruler hand. It just pushes through. It's it's pretty cool, okay. And we are we are working on other machine quilting rulers. Okay, the other thing, as I said, and John put the icon in there. The reason I'm stopping in the light area is because I'm using a light thread. If I were stopping in the dark area, I would be using the dark thread, okay? So, I mean, if I were using dark thread, I would stop in the dark area, all right? So let me show you then, okay, John's coming in for a couple questions, that would be good. Let's see, the laser light is great for quilting around applique, yeah. Um, is the laser light for seam line or needle placement? Needle placement. And you would think that you would be able to see where it goes, and you can, but man, if it's just right there, it really does, it really helps you. Again, it's around 200 and something, so worth it. You can install it yourself or have your engineer son-in-law do it for you. So um, let me show you on a domestic what, what we do here. On my domestic, I do use my walking foot and I do use my ruler. Now I'm only familiar with this walking foot. So you're going to want to, uh, whatever brand you're on, take a look and see if you have something like this. Um, in this case, the walking foot on this Bernina, in the back where that arrow's pointing, there's a little part that kind of jets out. That's what I butt my ruler up against. And again, you will need um, a, a ruler that is meant for machine quilting. You don't want to use one of your thin rulers. I I just just don't do it, okay? And so I butt it up there. And so I'm using not only my walking foot, but I'm also using um, the ruler. And it that's just like an added 25% protection. I mean, it's it's great. I don't even know what made me think of it, but it's worth it. Okay, so then when you get really good at your ruler work, then you can start whipping around in different directions. And this I would be doing with my free motion, not my walking foot. I'd be using my free motion foot on my uh, domestic. Um, if I'm using my walking foot, I'm having to you know, turn the quilt every 30 seconds. But once you get comfortable with this ruler, you can just go any which way, okay? So let's take a look at what that quilt is. I love this quilt. I call it surprise. There it is. And what I did on this quilt is I applique the silk squares on, but before I put the birthday candles on or the exclamation points, however you see that, I quilted the entire quilt. Then I applique on top. 
So that's how I did surprise. This is, I, I like this quilt. It's super fun. So I think we're pretty good. And we have some other questions that can just pop up real fast. Uh, next week, um, we're, we're having fabric cut like mad at work. It's fabulous. So what we're going to do is next week and maybe the next week, we're going to do uh, studio tour stuff. And then um, I'm probably going to take a little vacay for a week. And then we'll get started again with the baskets. Oh, stitch length on a domestic. I think I just go with the default. Um, yeah, I think I just go with the default on the domestic. I, I And I don't know how many that is to an inch. Just get something that's not too tight, but it's not too big. <laughs> that really helps, right? You know, just that length. <laughs> So, anywho, um, I'm glad you guys showed up today because we kind of forgot to post that I was going to be doing this, but if we do it again on Monday, I'm going to be here, okay? I want to get through the studio tours. What I did was I went through many people's studios, uh, famous people, and uh, I... I took pictures of things that I thought were really great. But in the end, when you set up your room, your studio, whatever, it's got to be what works for you, right? Walking foot, oh, with ruler versus feed dogs. Oh, with feed dogs up or down. When I'm using my walking foot, my feed dogs are up. I'll tell you another little secret. Even when I'm free motion quilting on my domestic, I leave my feed dogs up. I learned this from Jean Wells. It just gives you about 10% more control because you are using a little foot that hops on top so you don't need to dump, put down your feed dogs if you don't want. I mean, if it's what you've done forever and it works for you, yay. But for me, I just don't dump my feed dogs at all. Um, let's see, Cheryl, love it. Don't have two, but can use info on my 700. Um, I'll tell you the other thing, you guys. Uh, Whatever sewing machine you have, uh, whatever brand, I mean, I can speak for Bernina, but I'm confident that other brands have this. If you go on their websites and start searching things, they're more likely to be videos and stuff like that. I mean, the care and feeding of a sewing machine is important. And if you buy yourself a good machine, and I don't know so much about with COVID right now, but you need to take your lessons because these machines are multi-layered and you peel away a layer, you peel away a layer. And on my Q20, had I not been playing with it, I wouldn't have understood what Amanda was telling me about the knot function. Uh, and it's great. And the knot function, it's like a little knot, uh, on the Q20 is a completely different function than the knot function on the domestic. I don't get it, but that's the truth. Oh, how many triangles are in the border? I don't know. I'll get out of the way. You can take a screenshot. And... I don't know. <laughs> One, two. I don't know. I don't know. But I'll tell you this. Whatever there's many of these things, there's this many of these things. So it exactly aligns up. I flunk geometry. So anyways, yeah, YouTube. I didn't even think about that. YouTube, go to YouTube. In fact, when I got the machine, it got set up and all that, but then I would, and the, and the books, okay, okay, the manual, YouTube is fabulous. For example, I needed to change the needle because one of you said, you need to change your needle. You could hear it. I couldn't figure it out. I couldn't figure it out. I go to YouTube and there it was, and it was the stupidest, easiest needle on the face of the earth to change. So, you know, they really, really, while it's a very sexy machine and looks big and imposing, it is a very simple, beautifully Swiss engineered machine. So do I mix straight lines with curves? Sure. I mean, do I? I don't know. Again, it's a mystery. You know, I learned this also from um, Cindy Needham. You can get like a clear plastic and put it on top and then get a dry erase marker. Be very, very careful, very careful. And then mark the plastic with your dry erase and then see what if you like what's going on as far as quilting goes. So I will continue to share, share show and share. You guys have inspired me beyond measure. This was a really scary quilt to do. But with that, it kept me entertained through the whole process. So have a good day. 
Right now it's 68 degrees, which means these boots were made for walking. Out for a walk. Have a good one, you guys. Enjoy your weekend and, and quilt, right? That's what I'm going to be doing. Oh, how big are the triangles, Carla? Okay, I'm not going to finish. Um, they were cut at five and an eighth and then cut corner to corner. I don't, which would make them finish at something odd. I can't do that math off the top of my head. So, and the reasons it's odd is because this is on point here. So it kind of threw the math off. It's exactly that is there. And this is cut at five and one eighth. Again, the book has it for you um, back here. In the back of the book, it helps you cut all the things. If you don't have this book, order it. Uh, we have plenty in stock. I'll let you know when we're going to be putting the Edita fabric on um, on Lion for Sale, and we'll make sure everybody has an equal shot at it. So, yeah, yeah, Paul, don't go swimming with Alex. Oh, God, you guys, just go watch that right now. Goodbye, Facebook. <laughs>